So how are you doing? I'm good. Okay. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Hey, so yeah, so here she is. You might not recognize her anymore. It's been a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you sure uh, this is mine? Yeah, I'm not sure. Not. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ken Newfield. I've been doing guitar repairs for 40 um, odd years. Um, year, many years ago, uh, back in the early 80s, uh, a fellow by the name of Kim Mitchell uh, came into the shop uh, asking if I could build him a guitar. Uh, at the time, uh, we had many uh, repairs and uh, bodies and necks that we put together uh, to make guitars out of parts. Um, I asked him what uh, body he might be interested in making this guitar with. Uh, he picked the blue, um, I think it was a Mighty Might or a Double Eagle uh, guitar that uh, our body uh, that uh, was available. Uh, and he picked the blue one. He, uh, uh, we didn't have a neck available at the time, uh, so we went upstairs uh, to uh, a bunch of guitars and I said, pick any Fender guitar neck that you want and I'll put it on that guitar. And so he picked this Fender Squire neck and I proceeded to put it on the, on the guitar. Uh, he decided to use these pickups out of his ES-345 uh, that he had, and he brought in the pickups. Um, he wanted uh, two humbucking pickups. I did talk him into having a middle pickup uh, uh, with a switch, and we decided on how we're going to do that. Uh, so I routed out the, uh, uh, the body to accommodate these humbucking pickups that I, we used in there and, uh, and put on the neck, basically put that guitar together. Uh, it turned out that it had a great sound, uh, and I, I've worked on it quite a bit since. Winding up putting in a Floyd Rose, uh, changing the neck out uh, uh, a couple times, uh, and uh, and just recently, uh, uh, basically, I've, I've refretted the guitar, and also uh, did a setup and repaired the bridge, and and, and some uh, body work to it as well, because the, the tremolo uh, was not functioning properly. Wow. So they're not massive frets. Yeah, but they're frets. They're frets, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh, there, was, <laughs> there was none left. There, there was nothing left. <laughs> and I didn't do anything with the board as far as you know. I used the existing board. Yeah. So, so, and then put it through the Fleck machine too as well. And what that does is it yeah. uh, it, it, it takes a great measurement yeah, off it and, and nice. does a great job. So. Yeah, he was he was quite big. He uh, basically had just uh, uh, separated from Max Webster uh, and was going on a solo career. So it was Kimbo a logo uh, was the album he was working on basically at the time. Uh, so that's basically it was just really at the start of his his solo career and uh, around when he when he when I met him basically. I had no idea the guitar was going to turn out to be his favorite guitar. Uh, it was just another guitar that uh, you know we were putting together. Uh, you know, around the same time, he had uh, Joe Lado building him a bunch of guitars, or a guitar. Uh, he wanted to build him a, a signature guitar and uh, have a Lado guitar. And um, it turned out that uh, this guitar turned up turned out to be competing with that guitar. Um, the story goes where he he'd pick up this guitar and play it, and the sound guys would give the thumb, thumbs up to this guitar. Uh, when he tried the Lado guitar, he would. It would be the thumbs down uh, by the sound guys. So uh, he turned out. It turned out he really, you know, liked this guitar, and then everybody liked liked the sound of this guitar. Uh, and he he wound up just giving the guitars back to Lado because he built him a couple guitars, and he wanted to paint them blue, just like this guitar. It was a hardtail at the time, so he put the strings through the back, just like I I had done on this guitar. But they just didn't have the sound that this guitar had. You know, there's. Um, every body sounds different uh, on every every uh, uh, electric guitar even that people don't realize that uh, a certain a sound uh, um, is going to be a sound of that guitar and that body and uh, and it, you really can't duplicate that you know even if you have the identical gu identical guitar you know um, uh, and it may sound it sound quite different holy shit nice yeah, so yeah, and, wow, and nice you, job, you should be man. right in tune too as wow. well. Oh, it feels me, I feel proud. It, uh, proud that I you know, did that guitar, you know. It's a bit of luck involved too as well, you know, but it's also being able to make it work too as well, to make it function. And that's, that's just a lot of fine tuning in that. Because if you have a guitar that's not set up properly or anything, it's, it's not going to function that well. So, uh, so just, you know, you have to have all the things into place 
to make it make it uh, function the way it does, and to give it the best leg up. But uh, yeah, I was very I was proud to ha you know to have to see him that he liked that guitar for so many years, and uh, yeah, it's just a great feeling. You think you'll strike again with another? Another artist coming in. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that, that can happen. You know, a lot of that uh, kit stuff, you know, that we put together, I don't uh, build guitars from scratch, but although I've, you know, reshaped necks and I've done basically all the work, um, you know, of the building part of it, but uh, but it's a lot to put together the guitar anyway, and uh, um, there has been some interest in, in, in doing that here. Uh, but, you know, but we haven't, we're not really set up like that here like we were back then. But yeah, it, it could definitely happen again for sure. Yeah. And I do a lot of work on guys' guitars and sort of bring them up to a, a level, a higher level. So, uh, so you know, it, it's in a different way, you know, that I, I get my, uh, my reward for, for the work I do, right? So it's in a different way of, of, of just, you know, people being confident that when they get the guitar back, it's going to function.